All along, I thought it was corrupt, hot mess Hunter exploiting the dad's name and kind of, you know, bringing Joe in on a deal here or there to pay some bills, but that this was a Hunter operation. It's just now dawning on me that, no, this was a Joe Biden operation using Hunter. It's the other way around. It, yes. And so I, I think I do feel a lot of sympathy for Hunter. I mean, he, he you know, his life is a mess. Uh, he was a crack addict. I hope, you know, his recovery is going well. Um, but I, I do feel sorry for him. He had great tragedies in his early life. He lost his mother when he was two years old. He was badly injured with his older brother, Bo, in that yeah, car accident. Um, and, uh, and, you know, Joe Biden has had this image that he's carefully cultivated for many decades of being such a good father and family man and, uh, and and a man full of empathy because of the grief, genuine grief he himself has suffered losing his wife and his baby daughter in that car accident. But I also look at the photos uh, from his swearing in. Um, he, he didn't have to go into the hospital room where his little bandaged boys were lying and have them in the foreground of these photos as he was being sworn in. He could have done it out in the corridor. Um, but no, uh, that, you know, no American could fail to be moved and um, feel, you know, weepy when you see that photo of those little motherless boys um, lying in the hospital bed with their father behind them with his hand up swearing an oath. Um, but it's a very cynical photograph and Joe Biden used it in every campaign since and he's traded off that tragedy uh, in his career to, you know, a rather a lacklustre intellect um, to rise to great heights and the sympathy that that, that tragedy elicited and, of course, then compounded by the fact that, um, you know, the favoured son, Bo Biden, uh, died tragically of a brain tumour sometime later and he was really Joe Biden's, um, you know, golden child. The uh, He was supposed to be president. Uh, that was the dynasty that Joe Biden, I think, is cares about more than anything else, is creating a Kennedy-like dynasty. He even has a sort of Kennedy-like compound in Delaware um, where the, where he sort of plots his presidential runs. Um, so uh, there has been tragedy in the family, but I don't see a lot of empathy really in Joe Biden because um, he he's exploited his son. I, I mean, that seems a very harsh thing to say, but it's what I've observed. And, um, you know, for instance, Hunter Biden did have an addiction problem. Um, that you know, you could expect maybe from someone who suffered early childhood trauma. And so what kind of a father puts his addicted son in front of gushing torrents of unaccountable cash, which is exactly what was happening from Ukraine, from China, et cetera. You would keep your addicted son away from that if you really cared about them. Oh my gosh, these are amazing points. This is giving me just a whole new lens through which to see this entire story. And this is exactly contrary to the way the media portrays him and he portrays himself, as you're pointing out. I'm thinking now even about Bo Biden and how when Joe Biden was thinking about running for president, he said yeah. Bo Biden, you know, wanted him to do it, you know, like a deathbed wish. And now that he is president and he refers to his son who has passed, he says that Bo died in Iraq trying to ratchet up the sympathy, I guess we're supposed to feel. But <clears throat> of course, Bo Biden did not die in Iraq. He died from a brain tumor that may have been linked to some of the things that he was exposed to in Iraq. We don't know. But it's just these little manipulations that tug at your heartstrings that are actually incredibly cynical and not, not a lovely example of a loving father. And, you know, we could talk about the, the unacknowledged granddaughter now. And, you know, while still the team around him meets and strategizes over how to keep that out of the news. You did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now that decision to do the tough thing could qualify you for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Think of it. It's a pot of money already allocated sitting there for those who qualify. Government funds are available right now to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. It's not a loan. You don't have to pay it back. The program is, of course, complicated. They never make it easy on you. But no one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax pros at covidtaxrelief.org. 
you don't have to pay a thing up front. These guys are going to do all the work for you, and then if they get cash for you, they share a percentage of it. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify. Even if you took a PPP loan, you you could qualify. And even if you had increases in your sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Now let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to $26,000 per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org. That's covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.